Order, order. I call Peter to remove the motion. Peter Aldous. Thank you very much, Sir Robert. I beg to move that this House should consider Colleges Week 2024. Thank you, Sir Robert. It is a pleasure to serve with you in the chair, and I thank the Backbench Business Committee for granting this deb debate during Colleges Week, which runs from Monday until tomorrow. I should also point out that I chair the APPG on Further Education and Lifelong Learning, the Secretariat for which is provided by the Association of Colleges, who, among others, I'm grateful to for the briefings and support they have provided ahead of this debate. The debate, Sir Robert, essentially falls into three parts. Firstly, celebrating the great work that colleges are doing all around the country. Secondly, highlighting where government policy and support is working. And thirdly, pointing out those areas where more work and attention are required so that colleges can realise their full potential for the benefit of, the, of those people and those communities that they serve. So, Robert, it's first important to celebrate the great work that colleges are doing. All around the UK, they are, they are an essential part of our education system. They are firmly embedded in their local communities, where they are fully cognizant of the opportunities and challenges and the strengths and weaknesses of their local economies. They enable people of all ages and backgrounds to realise their full potential. They are key players in boosting local regeneration and levelling up and in eliminating those gaps in skills and productivity which are in danger of ever widening. And they play a vital role in preparing people for the jobs of tomorrow which all of a sudden are with us today in such areas as digital, AI and the low carbon fields. So Robert, colleges touch all of our lives. English colleges educate 1.6 million students every year and employ approximately 103,000 full-time equivalent staff. 925,000 adults study or train in colleges. 608,000 16 to 18-year-olds study in colleges. The average college trains 950 apprentices. 100,000 people study higher education in a college. 23% of 16 to 18-year-olds and 27% of adult students are from minority ethnic backgrounds. 26% of 16 to 18-year-olds in colleges have a learning difficulty or a disability. 58,000 college students are aged 60 and over. In summary, Sir Robert, colleges do their job very well. 92% of colleges were judged good or outstanding for overall effectiveness at their most recent inspections. They do this, they do at times feel that they are doing this with one arm behind their backs, and I shall touch upon this shortly. Firstly, Sir Robert, I shall briefly highlight the great work that East Coast College are doing in the Waveney constituency. They now operate from two campuses, in Lowestoft, in my constituency, and in Great Yarmouth, in the constituency of my right honourable friend, the member for Great Yarmouth. They are, they, they fully understand the challenges of coastal communities, those communities in which they are deeply immersed, and they work very closely with the local authorities, local businesses, the James Paget University Hospital, CFAS, that is the government's marine scientists who are based in Pakefield, next to Lowestoft, 
and the two universities which cover the area, the University of East Anglia in Norwich and the University of Suffolk, which is based in, it has its headquarters in Ipswich, but actually operates across Suffolk. In Lowestoft, East Coast College are active members of the Place Board, of which I'm also a member, that is overseeing the projects that are being carried out as part of the town deal. In their work, they have a specific focus on two particular areas. Firstly, the need in the health and care sector to support an elderly and ever-growing elderly population. They have put in place the Apollo project. This isn't a journey to the moon, but it's a two-year workforce program designed to address recruitment and retention challenges in the health and social care sector. Secondly, there are op op the opportunities emerging in the energy sector. Among other, other projects, there are the offshore wind farms anchored off the East Anglian coast, and there is the size we'll see nuclear power project just down the coast. In recent years, Sir Robert, significant capital improvements have been carried out at East Coast College. These include the Energy Skills Centre in Lowestoft and the Eastern Civil Engineering and Construction Campus at Lound, which is midway between Lowestoft and Great Yarmouth. At present, the college's challenges centre more around revenue funding and their needs mirror those of the rest of the sector to which I shall now turn. The good news is that in recent years there has been a realisation of the vital role that colleges have to play in providing people with the skills that they need to realise their full potential, to address regional inequalities and to ensure that the economy fires on all cylinders. Some good initiatives have been put in place, such as the lifelong learning entitlement, and funding has improved, albeit from a low base. That said, significant challenges remain, some structural and long-term, and others deriving from the cost of living crisis and the long and sharp tail of COVID. The Local Government Association point out that the national employment and skills system is too centralised, short-term in outlook, and that no single organisation is responsible or accountable for coordinating programmes nationally or locally. This makes it difficult to plan, target and join up provision. They also identify that poor quality, insufficient and fragmented careers, education, information, advice and guidance, that's SIAG, is a persistent and key barrier to youth employment, notwithstanding the, introdu the introduction finally of the Baker Clause in the, in the Act from 2022. The Edge Foundation focus on the problem that is all around us, that of skills shortages that are getting worse. These shortages are numerous and have grown significantly. The rate of skills investment is in decline and skills shortages have significant costs for UK businesses, the economy and the environment. Focusing on a particular sector, that of engineering, which is important to me locally, as these are skills that, which will be much in need to fuel the transition to a low carbon economy, Engineering UK, in their Fit for the Future Engineering Apprenticeships Inquiry, have highlighted the variability and quality of training provision and the problems in recruiting teachers and trainers. Sir Robert Colleges Week normally takes place in the autumn. However, this year, for good reason, it has been brought forward to the spring. Not only so that it is taking place in advance of the general election campaign, so as to provide the sector with every opportunity to set out their stall, but also to make urgent representations ahead of next week's budget, so as to meet many of the challenges which I have briefly highlighted. 
I would be most grateful if my right honourable friend, the minister who's in his place, it's great to see him there, but I have to I confess I was expecting the, um, the, honour, the right honourable member for Harlow, but nevertheless, it is great that he's there because it, this is an issue that actually he and I in the past have actually um, discussed a great deal. But I'd be grateful if he could convey some of these asks to my right honourable friend, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, in advance of his budget statement next Wednesday. Firstly, as I've mentioned, there are these skills gaps across the country in all sectors of the economy. To eliminate these gaps, I would urge the government to invest the extra money raised from the immigration skills charge so as to enable colleges to tackle the urgent priorities identified by both employers in the local skills improvement plans that, that, that are now being rolled out across the country and also that have found in the increased number of skills shortage vacancies that have been revealed in the latest Department for Education employer survey. In October, at the Conservative Party conference in Manchester, my right honourable friend, the Prime Minister, quite rightly announced a 10-year plan to give young people a better start in life through the advanced British standard with more hours, a broader curriculum, and extra help for those who have struggled up to the age of 16. These ambitions, Sir Robert, are the right ones, but if they are to be achieved, we must start investing now if there is to be any chance of having the teachers, the trainers, and the facilities in place to deliver them. To do that, three issues need to be addressed. Firstly, the pay gap between those teaching in colleges and in schools must be closed. The gap has been widening in recent years and now stands at £9,000 per annum. This pay gap cannot persist if the advanced British standard is to be a success. Secondly, colleges are also disadvantaged when it comes to VAT. Unlike schools and colleges, VAT is not, cannot, is not reimbursed. It cannot be recovered. Colleges in England were reclassified as public sector organisations back in 2022 and are now subject to all the controls that apply to academies, but unlike academies and schools, they are unable to reclaim VAT under the Section 33 refund scheme. This could be addressed by amending the 1994 VAT, VAT Act regulations. The, the funds that would be released, totalling around £210 million, could then be reinvested, helping colleges to deliver the improvements to the school system which the government is seeking. Thirdly, as I've mentioned, Sir Robert, COVID has had a long and sharp tail impacting harshly on young people's education. The government recognised this with providing funding for tuition support to help those with the greatest need to obtain the necessary grounding in English and maths and to catch up on those vocational courses where assessments were deferred. That was good news, but the indications are that the demand for these lessons and courses is still growing. It is estimated that approximately 40,000 more students than last year need to resit their English GCSEs and 20,000 for maths. I would therefore urge my right honourable friend to do all that he can to ensure that the funding for this tuition support is extended. So Robert, I'm reaching my conclusion. I'm quite sure that in this debate, other colleagues will refer to FE and colleges as being the Cinderella of our education system. This indeed is what happened in the past. This was right in the past, but my sense is that across the chamber, all parties have recognised this error and indeed the folly of this particular way. And we are now, after a long, long time, travelling down the right road. 
with the importance of vocational learning, as provided by colleges, being acknowledged and accepted by all. However, we are driving down this road in third gear. And what we now need is for government to provide the resources, the support, and the more policies so that we can quickly and seamlessly move into top gear. If we do this, we shall provide opportunity for many, and we will eliminate all of those stub stubborn gaps that I have referred to a great deal during this speech. Thank you, Sir Robert. As is considered, colleges can deliver, and we know that they deliver incredibly well. Peter Aldous. Thank you, Mr. Um, I'm, I'm a shade disappointed because we had a high volume, not, not with the quality of the debate, it's the uh, we had a very high um, demand to take part in this debate, and we've not had as many colleagues here as I would have hoped for, um, but there are plenty of demand, loads of demands on people's times. But what we've lacked in quantity, I sense we've made up for in quality, and I'm very much the one person out in this, in that of the all the people who've participated, I'm the only one who's not had a front bench role. So, you know, it's been very interesting to hear from me, from those on the, on the front line, so to speak, their views on this. But just summing up, and the, the three of us on this side have all been here since 2010. And if we look at the journey that we've gone on, I, I sense that colleges are in a better place, generally speaking, today than, than, where, than they were in 2010. Um, and in particular, when I look at the quality of the estate, that has certainly improved. But I think we just need to move on. The shiny new buildings are actually very, very important. But we do need the teachers to be, and the trainers to be able to do the work, do, do the, do the lear, help the learning in those colleges. And that is where we have got a particular problem today. And if I look at the, if I look at the energy sector that East Coast College are having to deal with, I look at, we, we have a crying need for welders and fabricators. There is a real challenge in getting those teachers and trainers. Um, the Baker Clause, Lord Baker fought for that for years. He took too long to get it, and he has now got it. I'm just, I would just welcome at some stage how this is actually going down in practice, because I've not actually been around where, when I go around the community that I represent and say, ah, that's, that's a result of the Baker Clause. I'm not, not sure we pull a lever in, in this place, it doesn't automatically lead to a gear change in the rest of the country. The, the one disagreement we've had is on the issue of apprentices. And I think if you look where we were in 2010, where we are today, we generally are in a better place. But it has not been a smooth journey. There have been ebbs and flows along the way. And I am slightly confused by some of the, um, some of the statistics. Um, but, and I would suggest that there may have been times two or three years ago, that actually we were in a better place than where we are today. And I think one of the challenges is to get SMEs properly involved in the, in the apprenticeship system. That moves on to the levy. The levy is a good idea. It's a great idea, and government was right to introduce it. But there are teething difficulties. There are challenges with money being um, returned to the Treasury. And... The Honourable Lady who speaks for the opposition, she and I have been in events where I've actually said we do need to be pressing ahead with a review now rather than waiting to all, when all the hullabaloo of the election has taken place and doing it next year. It needs to go on, it needs to take place now so we can, as I said, just iron it out and get it on the right journey. I'll finally come to my 
asks, if you like, my funding asks of the, cha of the Chancellor. Now, this isn't, what ultimately this is about is a level playing field. And it's a level playing field when it comes to VAT. Colleges are not on a level playing field with schools and academies. It's a level playing field when it comes to what teachers are paid. Again, they are not on that level playing field. And I think the final issue I would just touch on, again, when I look back over the time that I've been in this place, there have, right back at the beginning, there were problems with, if you like, the colleges picking up the pieces of young people who, for whatever reason, hadn't acquired those basic literary and numeracy school skills when in secondary education, and the, col the colleges having to, do, having to do that. That situation improved, has improved dramatically, but COVID has thrown a big spanner in the works, and they're having to work very, very hard to address that. It's not going away immediately, and that is why they do need those funds to be extended. So, Robert, thank you for bearing with me for a few extra minutes. It's been a good debate. This, this House has considered Colleges Week 2024. Is many of that have been say aye? <laughs>